like four o'clock in the morning and I'm here making this video again. I'm really sorry if you guys caught my first round. Um, I rewatched it a couple of times. It's been so long since I've like made a proper video. I was trying to rush all the information out there, assuming everybody knew everything that was going on. And when I rewatched it, to me, it didn't actually make a whole lot of sense. I felt like I left huge chunks out. And this video is going to be the last video that's up. So people that know me and people that don't know me, this is the information they're going to be left with. And so it needs to be as exact and full as possible. I know I look really tired and it's just because I haven't been sleeping lately and my insomnia has kicked in again. So excuse me ahead of time. That's not stress. That's just days and days of no sleep. Um, anyway, so I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier to understand and I'm going to leave out the background music. I tried to make a proper video like everybody else and have nice background music and, um, to me it's always really distracting because the background music overrides your voice and it just, it's hard to focus on one or the other and I just wasn't happy with the video as a whole. So I'm going to try again. Please bear with me. I am really sorry. I have to put you through this again. So starting from the start, I am leaving social media. I have left social media. I have not been online for about two to three weeks now. I do not have any other profiles. I do not have any other pages. I don't have anything open at the moment. I do not plan on having anything open for the foreseeable future. I've got no desire to be back online. I've actually been having a really good time being offline. Holy shit, I look tired. <laughs> um, and as far as I know, I'm going to stay offline. Josh and I are both offline. We are both intending to stay offline. Starting from the start, from the start, 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 for those of you who don't know, because I've removed most of my videos, I have been stalked and harassed and hassled and bullied and everything else by a few hate sites online called Kiwi Farms and Lol Cow. And then there are, of course, individual people that are either from the site or not from the site, but they do the same thing. Now, these people have all targeted me. They targeted me about seven years ago. And I don't know what it is that brought me under their radar. Something did, and I have not been able to escape them since. I didn't know that they existed at first. I only found out years later when I was with my previous husband that these sites even existed and that I was apparently very, very popular on them. Um, I've gone through periods in my life where I wasn't necessarily a great person or a nice person or even a respectable person, you know, as we all do, we grow and we learn and we change. And I've gone through many, many stages of growth in my life. And I've tried to listen to what they had said about me and use it to improve myself, improve my life. I tried to take the positive out of all the negative. It didn't make a difference. Um, nothing that I did mattered. Nothing I did changed anything. They just kept on with the same old stuff or they turned it around. They said I was basically too fat to be alive because in New Zealand I had gained a whole bunch of weight. I got weight loss surgery, but apparently I'm undeserving of weight loss surgery and I'm still a fat fuck and I'm disgusting. I'm old. I'm too old to look the way I do, dress the way I dress, but others are, it's apparently okay for them. Although I really think that they've got issues with gothic people in general because they like mock every goth person out there except for Adora Bat Brat. They seem to love her. Um, unless I'm missing something, but uh, everybody else they can't stand. And uh, they didn't like my relationship with my son, who is 23 years old and who is old enough to know better and to make the right decisions in life and to maybe not be so selfish. But he will not take responsibility for anything that he has done and instead has joined their ranks and has turned on me and also lied his little butt off with the help of the little girl that he's seeing. Um... They have called me a pedophile because my ex-husband was 19 years younger than me. Now, I am, as of the date of this video, um, I'm 41 years old. I'll be 42 in 
was it May, June, I'll be 42 in four months. And I have always had an attraction for people younger than me. I'm not a pedophile. I've never been a pedophile. There's no sexual fetish there. It's nothing sexual at all. I just, I've never felt my age for whatever reason. And I've always gotten along better with those that are younger than me. Some people like people older, some people like people younger. It's just a matter of taste. I've dated people my age, I've dated people older, and I've dated people younger. And I've just always gotten along better with the younger ones. Now, my relationship with him was very odd as far as the numbers and the ages went. And I tried to be understanding and say, oh, I, I can see why people would have a hard time with it. But the fact is I've been out of that relationship for almost a year. I've left New Zealand, I've moved back to America. And I'm in a new relationship with somebody who is almost 32 years old. And I still get hassled and called a pedophile. And a predator and all this other stuff. Um, the proper definition for pedophilia is someone who has a sexual attraction for somebody who is prepubescent. And I have never been into children. Um, liking somebody younger than you does not mean that you are a pedophile. And I have taken the blame for that for our whole relationship, almost six years together, and I'm still taking the blame for it even now, even though I'm no longer in that relationship. So that has been an area of stress for me over the years, many, many, many years. So my weight, my age, my motherly, mothering skills or lack thereof, according to them, the way I express myself, the way I do my makeup, the way I dress, my tattoos, my piercings, every single aspect of my life has come under fire. Nothing that I have done has taken the heat off of me. Ignoring them, not ignoring them. I vanished offline in 2015 before I got my weight loss surgery. And while I was offline, somebody made a fake page um, saying that I had killed myself. And my friends posted on there saying, this doesn't sound like her, this is not Raven, she's still alive. And when that was posted, whoever made the page came forward and said that they were me and that I did indeed make the page, but I did it for attention or to see if anybody cared about me. And the hate sites say it wasn't them. It was definitely somebody. And they say that that was me, that was me, that was me. And I have stated on countless, countless occasions that I did not fake my death. Um, my son says I faked my death. He knows better. I did not fake my death. What I did was I said, do not answer if I'm alive or if I'm dead. Because I thought at the time that it would be a good idea if they did think I was dead. When the page popped up, I thought that it was a good idea just to let it go. Because if they thought I was dead, they would leave me alone. So I thought at the time. And uh, all I did was to tell my husband at the time and my son, if anybody asks you if I'm alive or dead, tell me who they are. I'll tell you if it's safe to tell them the truth. Otherwise, answer obscurely. Do not let them know. That way you're not saying I'm dead, that way you're not saying I'm alive, and then maybe they'll just go away. And it did not work. Um, I had thought about faking my death, but I actually went as far as to call the newspaper and ask what you would need to post an obituary in the paper. And that's when I found out that you needed like a doctor's certificate, cause of death, and death certificate and all that stuff. So I would not legally be able to do it. And so that idea was scrapped soon after... I called to find the information out is when that page went up and so it fit right with what I was trying to do anyway and I thought it would be a good idea and it would be a way for me to kind of get off the radar and it did not work that way but I promise you I did not make that page and I did not fake my death um that that's also haunted me for years because apparently I did um I guess that's a past all caught up pretty much. It's all you need to know is that I've tried to get away from it. I've tried to do everything anybody suggested. I've tried to see the positive in it. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. And this is now the seventh year of my life that they are stalking me. And if you go there and you go to catalog, you'll see I have more threads on there than anybody else. It's me, me, me. They take the most unflattering screenshots of me and they just talk so much shit. They lie and they've faked screenshots and they've faked profiles and they've faked conversations and they twist and turn the truth around. Um, for instance, Josh and I took in this 11 year old blind dog 
And we thought we were doing a commendable, really good thing by saving this dog's life because we were the dog's only hope. Nobody wanted him. He's He was old. He's blind. He came with a lot of health problems nobody knew about. And uh, instead of saying, oh, they're doing a good thing, they went off the wall calling the vet, calling the dog rescue, calling everybody, calling and emailing and Facebooking to try to get the dog taken from us. They failed. Um, they, for instance, used something I said in a video, um, something that I said when I was about 13, 14 years old in a video that I uploaded about 10 to nine to 10, seven, eight, nine, 10 years ago. They tried to link to that, use that against me. They took some statuses I made when my cat Marmalade was still alive and she had her kittens. They snipped parts of one of my statuses to make it look like I was selling kittens off to go out to dinner, which wasn't what happened at all. What happened was those kittens were spoken for before they were born and somebody picked them up, um, I guess as a Valentine's Day present. And when this woman picked up her kitten and paid, we were able to go out to Valentine's dinner that day because she happened to pick up her kitten on that day. But they were already sold, they were already spoken for. I mean, it wasn't like that at all. We didn't specifically just start selling off kittens. I mean, we tried keeping as many as we could, but in the end, we knew either I was gonna come to America, we were gonna come to America, we were gonna split up, and so we had to get rid of everybody. But I'm not going into that. <laughs> I don't need to explain my past anymore. That's not what this video is about. This video is about filling in people that might not know what all has happened. Um, so what else? What else? What else? Recently, as you guys know, my mother has passed away. That's been really hard. I've got a lot of emotions happening in my head. I, I still am not quite sure how to handle myself or what to do, how to deal with shit. Maybe that's why I can't sleep. I don't know. Um, it still doesn't feel real. I'm still trying to cope with the whole thing myself. Um... It just feels like I could just pick up the phone and call her at any time. You know, it doesn't feel like this has happened. I, I walk through the house and I'm like, she's gone. My mom's dead. She's gone. She's gone. And I just, I just can't really come to terms with it. It just doesn't feel, it's not, it's not a sentence you ever think you're going to say, you know? And, um, right around this time, I think either right before or right after I found out I was tagged in a status by somebody on Facebook and they were asking me and everybody else on the friends list who's mutual friends with this one guy to block him and to bash him for being a pedophile because this guy was in a relationship that had a five year age difference. And, you know, I decided to speak up, not just to ignore it, but I wanted to speak up. And I said, you know what? I don't condone this. I don't approve of it. I'm not going to bully somebody for a five year age gap. I don't think it's right and I'm not going to do it. I did not think that I would come under fire the way that I did. I thought I made a pretty valid argument. I explained my last relationship ish. I didn't go into great detail. I just said I, I had a 19 year age gap. Um, I mean, it was legal and everything, but I did get hassled for it because he was quite young. We're not together anymore. I'm going to pay for that relationship for the rest of my life, I'm pretty sure. And um, I came under attack from one person because of that. And I was just like, I really don't need this right now. I did not ask any of my friends to go and defend me. Because if somebody defends me or comments on anything or sticks up for me or whatever, it puts them at risk of coming under fire from the hate sites. So I usually tell my friends not to because I don't want to put them in that position. Um, that's not what being a good friend is. And uh, this one girl who I've known since my space days, she really doesn't deserve a mention, but she's part of this whole story. So that's the only reason I'm talking about her. Um, she says she defended me, but really all she did was say that she didn't condone bullying on her page or her friends list. I thanked her because I knew she was in her own way trying to stick up for me, even though she did not name me or name the situation. Um, I thought, well, at least, 
you know, she's a friend of mine. It's still nice that she said something. And uh, then I went offline. I had mentioned that I was going to go offline and I did go offline after that because I'm like, I don't want to be drawn into this bullying. I don't want to be drawn into this drama. I don't need it in my life right now. I just, I'm just over all the negativity and the hatred online and the maliciousness and people being petty and the power trips. I just didn't want any part of it. I had announced that I was going to be going offline, so it should have been no surprise. She popped up saying I fucked her over. I did something to her. I betrayed her. She should have known better. I don't know what the hell she's talking about because I didn't do anything to her. The only thing I did was get offline. She apparently came under fire because she defended me. And once she came under fire and she realized that I was no longer online to defend myself, she put me on blast. And she didn't put me on blast by telling the truth. She put me on blast by lying. And the lies she told were complete doozies. Now, I caught a glimpse of what she was saying before I got offline. And after that, I have a, I do have a friend around here that I've seen. I saw her um, yesterday, her and her fiance. We took, Josh and I took her out to dinner for her birthday. And she let me know kind of what was going on and that this person has gone around blocking everybody or blocking the profiles that they know about as far as what, what they have. Um, and that they were going online trying to expose me and saying certain things. And the things that she's saying are completely off the wall, like that I wanted to sue Josh for the crash and that Josh is a junkie and he held me against the wall and beat me up because I wasn't actually injured in the crash. I was only getting medication to give to him because he's a junkie. And when I couldn't get more medication, he kicked my ass. And that is so far beyond ridiculous. It's, I can't even laugh about it. Josh not only is not a junkie, even though the, the hate sites like to say he is, he's some kind of druggy junkie. He does no drugs. He smokes and he doesn't even smoke cigarettes. He smokes a jewel, which is like a vape that I got him for an early Valentine's Day present. Um, he doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do any of that. He is the most nonviolent person you will ever meet. And he would rather walk in front of traffic than to lay his hands on me. I was indeed hurt in the crash. As you guys know, I had a broken rib. I had a broken rib, bruising on my brain, uh, bleeding in my liver, a lacerated kidney, and a partially deflated lung. So you tell me how that's just whiplash and I lied about all that. I'm pretty sure I even had a video up where you can hear my rib cracking as I breathed because my rib was popping in and out. So those pills were for me <laughs> and I needed them to sleep because I couldn't move because my rib was broken. Um, I would not sue Josh. Why the fuck would I even think about that? And other stuff that I don't even want to get into. She is so full of shit. Every single thing she said was a lie. And she's posted screenshots, apparently, of conversations we've had. I don't know what the screenshots are. I was just told that she's posting screenshots of things that were said, but that conveniently enough, none of what she showed were any of the allegations uh, of things supposedly I said. So all these really, really, really bad things that I supposedly said, she hasn't even shown proof of those. She's shown proof of things that aren't even important. Um, so I thought that was a great big laugh. And I suspect that the reason she's actually doing all this, aside from the fact that she's a pussy and she can't actually handle getting talked shit about, welcome to my world, you know, whatever. I think that what it is is because uh, apparently I used to talk to her boyfriend or fiance before they were together on MySpace many, 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 many years ago. And I don't remember him whatsoever, but apparently he used to have a thing for me. She told me this and uh, she's probably jealous because of that, which makes no sense. And she also told me that he's been going behind her back, talking to his ex-girlfriend, saying that he loves her. She's the only one he's ever loved and wants to be with. And all this, I was trying to be a good friend to her. I said, you don't deserve to be treated that way. You deserve someone who's going to love you the way you love them. 
and maybe it's time to live for yourself instead of hanging on to somebody that obviously doesn't love you. And uh, I said, whatever you decide to do, I'll support you. I'm here for you because that's what friends do. And uh, she stayed with them. I didn't ask her about it. I didn't judge her. I just, you know, whatever. I saw that they were still together. She took him back and I just figured, well, you know, she must either really love him or just really be desperate. And But it's not my place to judge because it's her relationship. And um, you can tell she's miserable because only miserable people do the kind of stuff that she has done to me. And the only thing that I'm going to miss about her so-called friendship is all the makeup that she said she was going to send me. I said this in the other video and I think it's funny enough I'm going to say it again. She showed me boxes and boxes and boxes of like this makeup she promised she was going to send. And I knew she was full of shit at the time, but uh, I know for sure she's full of shit. As is the person that tried to troll me and say, oh, by the way, I bought you something from your Amazon wish list. Um, I wrote back and I said, thank you. And then they wrote again and I, I ignored it. I knew that they were from the hate site. I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I always say thank you because it's a polite thing to do. I don't want to just like leave a message and not say anything. So I do try to write back at least to say thank you. I did that, but I checked out her profile and she pretty much was only following me in my videos and only the really kind of offensive ones. And so I knew right then and there that she was a troll. Um, who, what else? Um, my friend told me that they are laughing and saying that I have like seven fake profiles that I'm online with right now and I'm watching everything they're saying and doing. So I just want to reiterate that neither Josh nor I are online on any profile, not a fake profile, not anything. We are not online, period. I check my email every couple of days. Um, I don't check it very often anymore, so I'll have like 50, 60 spam in there, just boom, 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 because I'm, I'm checking it so rarely now. Um, I don't log into Facebook all my Facebooks are deactivated. Even the fake one that I did have, which was the one I contacted bitch face on when I first moved here because I didn't want anybody to know where I was or that I was online. I just wanted some peace and quiet. So uh, I talked to her on there because I trusted her because I thought she was my friend. And um, that's been deactivated. Everything else has been deactivated. And if I did reactivate, it was only so I could log in on my phone and deactivate messenger because now you have to deactivate through the messenger app you can't just deactivate online and have messenger gone too so we've done that so there's no reaching me there's no reaching josh we're offline as far as my other video went i've gotten a few questions i'm not answering any questions if you want to ask me something that's direly important then email me my email is around for those that know where to look <laughs> um but I'm not opening my comments for questions and answers and communication because that means I'm going to be sticking around online to be responding to people. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to say a goodbye to everybody and explain what has happened and why I'm leaving and kind of wrap everything up in a nice tidy bow. And ooh, what the fuck? And uh, that's about it. You know, I'm not trying to get into conversation with people. I'm very sorry if that seems rude, but I've got to cut it somehow. And I'm not going to cut it or be able to cut it if I keep coming back to respond to you guys. So I'm just, I'm just not. Um, you want to know where Doja is and if we still have them. You want to know if we're getting married, if we've gotten married, if we've gotten more pets, if we're getting more pets, if we're moving, if we have moved, if we're going to move, if I get pregnant, you know... Uh, I acknowledge this in my other video, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, Fuckface there had tried to say that, because um, I didn't talk about this, I don't think. But during the crash, I was pregnant. I was pregnant. Um, because of the crash and or the medication or just because my body's fucked, I lost it. She tried to say that I lied and I faked a pregnancy to guilt Josh or make him stay with me or something stupid like that. For one, I don't need a fake pregnancy to keep him with me. He loves me. He will never leave my side. I have never felt so sure of somebody's love like I do with him. 
I love him as much as he loves me and he's not going anywhere. So I don't have to lie or pretend or fake anything to keep him. Um, she said that apparently when I had my ectopic, they burnt both my tubes so that I could never get pregnant again, which is kind of funny because that didn't happen. I had my right tube removed because that's where my ectopic was. My tube had burst, it had ruptured and I had internal bleeding, but I still have my left tube. So it just goes to show how full of shit she is. She's sitting there talking about my life as if she knows my life and she's fucking wrong on every front. Um, so there's that. Uh, the things that you hear and you read are not true. They are just twisted half truths as I've always said. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say or what I said in my last video uh, to give you two recent examples of how much they stalk me I had commented on a video on one page on Facebook before I shut everything down it was a like page that had millions of likes on it so it was quite a big page which means quite a bit of traffic through it and it was some video with some girl and she said, I'm so shook. And I was like, oh my God, did she actually just say that? And so I commented that. Did she really just say that? And somehow on this very busy, very popular page, they saw that I commented and they screenshot it and they said, wow, you know, in the middle of her morning, she's commenting, talking shit or something. They said something along those lines. Um, I was sent a whole bunch of screenshots, by the way, of a lot of the shit that was going down because I wanted to know what was being said without actually visiting the site myself. So, uh, this time around, I haven't been, I don't know like word for word, all of what's being said. I only know what's been passed along to me by my friends. And, uh, I just thought that was really weird that they would know what I posted right after I posted it on a, a page like that and see like I monitor my friends list and I don't accept anybody who's got less than I'd say 500 friends 500 to a thousand friends I don't accept and if you have that many friends your feed would be pretty full I don't see how you'd see every move I make it just doesn't make sense they stalk me that much I also had a few other YouTube channels as you guys might know and on one of them, I posted the story of my life. And that's a channel that I don't use. It was like a backup channel. And uh, I had only posted my story there because at the time I wasn't able to upload videos longer than like 15 minutes on this channel. And that video happened to be like an hour long because it's, you know, my whole life. So I had uploaded it there and I had denied all comments. And then I allowed comments and I saw that nine months ago, almost 10 months ago, Josh had commented on that video and I hadn't even known because I don't use that channel. So it's been at least nine months, if not slightly longer. And I went and I saw it a couple weeks ago and I proved it. And I said, oh my God, blast from the past. You know, I was just like, wow, this is so cool. It's a comment from him before we even started dating. And on this random obscure channel that had like one video on it that had had comments disabled for the last nine months. The moment that I accepted comments and accepted and responded to his one comment, they found it and they, they put that on their site. How the hell would they know that unless they were stalking like every single link I have constantly? It just boggles my mind that they would put that much effort in, I mean, to catch something like that, that they would have no right to know because I didn't even know I had a comment on that page. I use it so rarely, you know what I mean? It's just the thing with this ex-friend of mine, the thing with them going onto my mom's memorial page and posting as me, posting as my sister, posting as a supporter trying to say, trying to take a dig at me and say that, well, at least my mom had two children that loved her, meaning my brother and my sister, not knowing that my mom only had me and my sister. My brother is my stepdad's son from somebody else. Um, and my brother and sister are together and they have a kid together. He's not my real brother. He's only my stepbrother. 
um, and he's not related to my sister at all because my stepdad adopted me, did not adopt her. So, uh, yeah, that was supposed to be a dig at me as well. And to think that they would be so low as to go on to someone's parents' memorial page and start shit. It was just, that right there was the final straw for me. And that's when I decided, like, I just can't do this anymore. I'd sit there and... I'd be on my phone monitoring shit constantly. Josh would be trying to talk to me and I'm so worried about what's going on online. It was taking my time and my attention away from him. And our relationship was falling into the same routine as mine and my exes to where if we made a video together and Josh was tired from work or he didn't look too happy, I couldn't post it because they'd say he didn't want to be with me. They were trying to read into every expression on his face. They still tried to say that he didn't want me to come here because when I told him that I bought the ticket, he was in the middle of working. He was shocked. He couldn't hear. He was in training. He had somebody with him and, you know, I didn't want to wait to tell him. But we had already discussed that I'd be buying the ticket that day. So he already knew and everything was fine. And obviously he wanted me here, you know. Um, it was all either of us wanted was for me to come here. And they try to act like they know how he felt and that he didn't want me here and they listened to his ex-girlfriend who said that he lived on a couch and lived off of his mother when in fact he had his own place and before that he had his own place and his ex actually stayed with him her and her daughter stayed with him at his place and occasionally his mom would come and stay with him but he was not living with his mother and even if he was who gave a shit they think that I should be embarrassed because we live in a trailer it's like at least I have a roof over my head I like trailers and yeah the trailers that we've lived in might not be brand new or expensive but you know what it's a roof over our head they I saw a screenshot where they said that in New Zealand I had a cute little house in a much better looking place and I gave up my marriage to come here and live in a shack and it's like my marriage sucked it was not good I was neglected um, we were getting bullied. I was not right for him. He was not right for me. We thought we were right for each other, but in the end, we were not. We were two totally different people who were just trying to make it work, and it was doomed to fail. And the house was not nice. If you call breathing in black mold and falling through the floor because there's holes all under the carpet um, and bugs everywhere, if you call that a nice house, then you've got issues. But I'm happy here. I mean, I don't care as long as we've got power and we've got food and we've got four walls and a roof and we have each other. That's all I need. Sorry, my camera cut out, but um, I don't actually need a lot to be happy. Contrary to popular belief, you know, all I really want is a family of my own or to be loved, appreciated, someone I can get along with and talk to. Someone who's going to be there for me, understand me, not judge me. And I have all that and more. What else do I need? We have a vehicle. We have a, a fridge full of food. I cook all the time. I have a man that's the most beautiful guy I've ever laid eyes on. And yeah, you know what? In a lot of my relationships, I felt like they were the one or I'd hoped that they were the one. And I had really high hopes. I thought that I loved them. But I just wanted it so bad, you know. I wanted to be wanted so badly that I lied to myself. I put them on a pedestal. I wanted to believe that they wanted the same things that I did. And if they told me that they felt the same as me, I wanted to believe it. I wasn't going to just sit there and say, oh, you're lying. You know, I, I wanted to believe them, which is, I don't see anything wrong with that, you know. And if they ended up lying to me and hurting me, I was a fool for believing it. Um, but, ugh, sorry. It's just, it just, it didn't work out, you know? And there's nothing I can do about it. I go into each relationship with the same mindset, I guess. And uh, it usually fails pretty quickly. The signs start showing pretty quickly. And in this relationship, I... Like, it's like coming home. You know, I've said it so many times. Josh and I have actually been together almost a year already and nothing's changed except that 
we're learning more about each other all the time and we're actually closer and closer and closer we're closer than we were before and we're so comfortable with each other we have like the best relationship and i don't want my problems with social media to take that away i don't want to have to have him check his expression if he's tired or the words that he says because it might get twisted and turned and people finding ugly stuff and everything he or I say or do our relationship doesn't deserve that and I never wanted to be a public figure in the first place I never intended on it or tried to be anything other than what what I am which is just a girl trying to live her life you know I made videos for my ex so he could see me just doing stupid stuff saying hi or counting my piercings or showing what tattoos I had like real dumb childish stuff and then I started getting people following me and so I started talking and then I used YouTube as a sounding board and I never got into the I, I really don't get into the whole putting music in the background I've done it two or three times total and the only time I actually liked it was on the Christmas video because it was Christmas music in the background but Aside from that, I, I hate music in the background. I hate cutting and editing my words because if I've said it, then obviously I want it to be said. I hate jump cuts. I hate over editing. I just, it is what it is. You're going to listen or you're not going to listen. This is my platform. This is my space to use. And if I want to have a 30 minute video or an hour video, then I'll do it. You know, nobody has to watch it. Uh... I just don't want to live like this anymore and now that I'm here and I've got people I can see in real life I've got friends that are close by I've got a good friend that is close and then I've got some other friends that are close I have an upcoming wedding um, I've got you know babies to look after and I've got books to read and you know we've got places to go and things to do and it's just I don't have time to dwell on petty people and their lies and their bullshit because they are sad and they're miserable and they're you know they're lonely and they've got nothing else and you know being able to put a face behind a lot of their names seeing who they actually are um it's just made the whole thing even more ludicrous to me because these people are not one to talk about other people. They're nothing special. They don't look like their lives are stable enough that they can sit on their high horse and judge other people. And it just goes to show you that they are truly miserable inside themselves because these are not actions of people that are happy with themselves or their lives. And... I will be the very first one to admit that I've made a whole bunch of mistakes in my life. I've made bad decisions. I've been a horrible person. I've said nasty things, but we live and we learn and we grow and we change and we evolve. And I've done that. I've done my fair share of that. And I know I have, and I'm very proud of the person that I've become. And yeah, I might be almost 42 years old. So, you know, maybe a bit late for self-discovery, but you're never too old to learn. You're never too old to grow. And as long as you live your life and you're not trying to hurt other people, then I don't see what the issue is. You look the way you want to look. You dress the way you want to look. You do what you want to do. As long as you're not trying to take somebody else's free will away and you're not trying to bring somebody down, make them kill themselves, hurt themselves, hurt them. You know, you just... Live your life and do what you need to do to be happy within yourself. And I don't think anybody should tell you that that's wrong. It's what I do. There's so many people who say I'm too old to look the way I do. But you know what? What is it hurting you? This relationship, does it hurt you? What I eat or don't eat, does that hurt you? If I want to move, if I want to live in a trailer, if I wanted to camp in a tent outside, how does that affect you? If I like Walmart and teddy bears and taco bell how the fuck does that affect you i'm not going to be ashamed of the things that i enjoy in my life because there's nothing wrong with it there are people out there i was actually watching a video with josh today and i was like you know what 
why are they on the hate? Why are they not on the hate sites? But I am like, seriously, it's just what the fuck. And it's the, the adult babies, you know, they suck on pacifiers and they wear their, their little baby pajamas and they carry around the stuffed animals and they talk baby talk. Daddy, where are we going? Oh, ooh, there's a puddle, daddy, you know, but that's okay. Right. I mean, that's okay. And people that act like that and the act like so many people I see that cross my feed when I was on Facebook that I saw crossing my feed. And it's like the things that these people would say and the pictures they would take and the things that they would do, but they're not on the hate sites, but me, I am. And I'm one of the most popular people on there for what they have this, this version of me that's on there that they've talked up and up and up into this monster. And when people come on, they're like, who is this Raven person? They'll be like, Oh, go check out her threads. And they'll read all this bullshit. And they'll be, Oh my God. Oh my God. She's insane. She's like the worst person on here. Holy shit. That bitch deserves to die. And I'm like, you do know that everything you're reading is not true, right? You do know that they've taken everything out of context and they've twisted it and switched it and they've made me seem really bad when I'm not actually that bad. Um, but they don't care because drama. Drama is all that matters because anything to fill their empty little lives. And like I said in my other video that I uploaded earlier today, I consider this a win for me because I'm still here. I'm living my life. I'm in America. I'm happy. I get treated like a celebrity around here. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I get people stopping. Oh, I love your hair. Oh my God, I love your piercings. Oh my God, I love your tattoos. FYI, these piercings are the most popular piercings here. Everybody asks about them. Everybody wants them. They're like, oh my God, I love your cheeks so much. Oh, I love your tattoos. Are you a tattoo artist? Oh, you look so amazing. And, um, it's just become an expected thing. And then they'll say, oh my God, I love it. And Josh is like, everybody does. <laughs> He's like, everybody loves her. Everybody talks to her. And, you know, it, it just, it's such a good feeling. Like, I'm so happy here. I'm happy in general. And I still get amazed by the prices of stuff. And we can go out and like, you know, oh my God, there's catfish. And, you know, I'm hooked on this grass-fed um, beef tenderloin, like I've been making that and it's just like, oh my God, it's so good. Like melts in your mouth and fast food can't even compare to the shit that I cook at home. And he loves everything I cook. And so I cook and I cook and I cook. And like, actually just yesterday I made him a egg and sausage sandwich for breakfast and some scrambled eggs with cheese, put in a little container for him to take to work to eat for breakfast. And then I made him two like melted cheese and turkey sandwiches for lunch and he ate it all up made his coffee and everything and you know I'm so domesticated now <laughs> but I can do these things for somebody that loves it and appreciates it and it just it just makes me want to do more and I, I'm just so happy and my life doesn't deserve to be brought down by hate sites and insults and having to wonder every time I come online am I going to come across this or this or this or that being said about me and I felt more freedom in the past couple of weeks than I felt in years. And I have his support and I have the support of people that I have personal contact with and they have my phone number, I have their phone number or my email address or whatever. And it's nice. It's really, really, really nice. And I can't see why I'd ever give this feeling up. That's why I'm, I'm so determined to have a good like a perfect goodbye video why I got rid of the other one to upload this one because this is like my legacy. This is what I'm going to leave behind. And if I were to die or anything were to happen to me, this is what people are going to know. So this has to explain everything just perfectly. So that's why this is long and that's why this has been redone. But I haven't had much happiness in my life and uh, I damn sure... I'm going to hold on to it with everything I've got and I'm not giving this up. This just popped in my head. I just wanted to say I'll I'll take a picture and I'll put it in if I can remember to. But I was actually I I I get laughed at for saying that I have agoraphobia 
because apparently I don't, which people think that agoraphobia is how it is on the movies where you can't go outside at all. And that's not true. Read up on it. I'm not going to go into it here. I don't have time. But I was actually diagnosed with that in 2008. So I got my medical records today from New Zealand and I was diagnosed with that. So that's in my records. Um, just thought I'd drop that off there and say that. But uh, everything I've said is true. I don't sit there and bullshit and I don't lie and I don't turn, twist shit around. What I say is how it is. And if you choose to twist that, then that's on you. And you need to get a life or learn how to listen to the actual words somebody's saying. Uh, lastly, I would like to close. Second to lastly. Second to lastly, I'd like to close and say, if you... I hate the fact that I have to say this again because I know that I'm repeating everything I repeated in my other video, but hopefully explained a little bit better. Um, but only like less than 200 people saw that video, so I'm hoping this one will hit more people and nobody will have really seen that one. But uh, if you see any comments, posts, statuses, Facebook pages, death notices, whatever from me or Josh, do not believe it unless you see one of our faces saying that, oh my God, Raven's dead, which would not happen because we've already had that talk. If I was in an accident or a heart attack or something like that, um, it would not be posted because I know that they'd run away with it and laugh. So if I ever or whenever I die, it's not going to be told to anybody. <laughs> so just getting that out of the way. But, uh, doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the date on it is. It doesn't matter what pictures next to it, what name is next to it. You can easily fake screenshots. You can easily make a fake profile, put somebody's picture by it and fake a conversation. Um, whatever you see from me or from Josh, unless you see us speaking it here, don't believe it because it will not be true. I know what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they are going to still think that I'm watching everything that they're doing, which I'm not. Um, and then once they realize I'm not around and they have no idea what's happening in my life, which is my win, by the way, because I can still do everything, but they won't know what I'm doing. They won't know anything. And that's going to that's gonna drive them crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, they've been following me so long. There's, there's no way they can just break away from me like that. And I'm forcing them to break away from my life. And they're not going to like that. They hated it when I did it in 2015. And they fucking hated it when I moved here and I vanished to the point where they made pro profiles as me posting fake statuses as me pretending I don't even remember what they said but it was something about me and Logan and or me and Josh me and Josh broke up or I don't even know what the fuck but they like to post as me and say that I say stuff just to make me look worse they do it to amuse themselves or to calm me out or to convince other people that I'm a fucking monster I've always admitted readily everything that I've ever done. Um, whatever mistakes I've made, I've admitted to. If I have said I didn't do something, I didn't do it. And having neither of us online able to defend ourselves or to intercept what might be out there. Uh, just a warning to you guys. Don't believe anything you see. Unless you see a video, then you'll know for a fact that it is me or it is Josh. Now, lastly, I would just like to say again, once more, um, I'm really sorry, you guys. I know that there are some really nice people out there, and I know that there are people that do follow me and now me and Josh, because you genuinely do like us, um, relate to me, you love my videos, you feel like you know me and that you understand me and that I'm I'm real and down to earth and everything else you guys have written to me, and you guys have been there for me and you've helped me so much over the years. You've helped give me a place to vent, to talk, to get advice. You've helped me with money to go, you know, to the funeral. You guys have above and beyond been there for me. And I'm really sorry. I've tried over the years to stay online just for you guys, but there has to come a time when I have got to put myself first. I have got to. And I cannot do this anymore. It's not fair to me. 
and all that's going to happen is we're going to go around and around and around in circles and they don't deserve my life. They don't deserve to use my life for their entertainment. They've had seven years. They're not going to stop anytime soon. Every single suggestion that I've done, the fact that it hasn't worked has shown me that they're never going to go away. So I choose to drop out of it, live my life, love Josh and be happy. Um, somebody did comment and say that they hope they get at least one wedding picture. So maybe towards the end of the year, I might pop in with a video and show some pictures from our wedding. It all depends. Um, we're actually going to have two ceremonies. We're going to get married first ourselves. And then later on in the year, when we can get like the clothes and the rings and all that stuff, we'll have a proper wedding with like his family and all that. Except it won't be a wedding. It'll just be like the ceremony, but we will already be married. So the date won't count, but it'll be something so that we can include his family and everything. But um, we just kind of want to have the actual day just for ourselves. And um, there are people that are going to come to the wedding at the end of the year, but they know how to contact me, which is cool. And, uh, there are other people that I hope will come that need to contact me, but if not, it's still going to go ahead. They're both going to go ahead and I might, or I might not post pictures or snippets or whatnot. It just all depends on my mindset, how I feel. Um, I've hidden most of my videos and I've taken away most of my YouTubes. My Instagram is gone. All my Facebooks are gone. I still have my email, but I don't check it all the time. And, uh, what else? Um, Patreon is still there, but I only have two people left on there and I haven't actually uploaded anything because when I was, nobody was talking to me or responding. So it was kind of like a waste. And I've told both people that they don't have to, they don't have to pay. They don't have to send money. They can just stop at any time. No hard feelings. I don't expect, contrary to property belief again, I don't expect people just to throw money at me. So they are under no obligation to keep paying. Um, I know that the hate sites have ways of getting into my videos. They've gotten into private videos before. And people have gone to my Patreon, paid, taken my content, and then left. And so that's not a very safe place for me like I thought it was, which is why I don't use it. So... I don't expect anybody to just give me money and do that. You know, it's just, it's there, but it's just there, you know. Um, hey, if I do post wedding pictures, I might just post them there if those people are still hanging around. If not, I'll just see how it all works out. I mean, I've got no plans as far as anything goes. The only plan I have is that I'm not going to be online, but... You guys that have been there for me and are now there for me and Josh, you guys have been wonderful. You've been great. I'm really sad that this has happened to the point where I can't enjoy being online anymore. I can't enjoy being there for you guys. Um, I've lost my platform, <laughs> you know, my venting stage and all that stuff. Uh, but there has to come a point where you have to rejoin the real world anyway. And I've spent the last 10 years living online, 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 and not enjoying real life. And it's about time that I, I go outside and feel the sunlight and enjoy just living a real life. It's long overdue and I don't mind one bit. I do feel bad for the people that are going to miss me because I've gotten a lot of comments on the other video that I didn't you know, I didn't approve, but I did read and, um, I, I don't know what else to say except that I'm sorry. And I hope you guys understand in the comments. You guys do understand. I'm going to miss the cool people. Um, but I have to do what I have to do. Um, I apologize. I really appreciate everything you guys have ever done. I will think about you. Think about me. <laughs> don't forget me. Try not to forget me. And I might see you. I might not. I probably won't. Unless something really big happens. You'll just have to forgive me for that. And just remember. Don't be like them. Don't just try to hurt people. You know. If something's that wrong in your life. How about you try to fix yourself. Before you 
try to attack other people. It's just not a cool way to be. I mean, and I know when you're sitting alone by yourself and you're thinking deep inside, you've got to know it's wrong. There's no way you cannot know that what you're doing is wrong and really, really low. And, uh, I know that they don't believe that I'll be gone for good, but I mean, the only reason I've uploaded this is because I want a proper goodbye video. I didn't do it because I want to be back online. I did it because I think that the people that follow me deserve a proper explanation and a proper goodbye. And so this is for them, not for anybody else. And here's to living a real life, being with the one you love. And, um, getting away from hate. So take care, you guys. I don't really know how to end a video when I know I'm not going to come back. It's really weird. I'm like, how the fuck do you say goodbye? I forgot how I even say, said bye on the last one. I think I was gloating because um, I was saying that I was going to live my life and they will never know what I'm doing and they're going to be talking, but I won't be around. That's why I said, I said that they'll be yabbering and talking and I won't be around to hear it. And I was like, ha oh, bye. So just think of that but I'm gonna be laughing because I know it's like I, you know what I picture is an anthill that you stick a stick into and they're all running around all crazy like looking for the disturbance that's gonna be the hate sites like running around all crazy where is she where is she oh my god she's got to be online somewhere I know she's watching let's let's do this and this and this and this and call her out and you know they're gonna just be running around like chickens with their heads cut off basically trying to get to me and I'm not going to be anywhere to be found because I haven't been and I'm going to tell my friends not to actually update me because nothing that they say nothing that they do at this point can hurt me or take anything away from me like Josh will never leave my side I will never leave his side and that's all there is to it there's just you can't hurt me anymore and that's that's true winning right there I win, you lose.